welcome to another edition of Pam for Pam Picks, the Yusef versus Barbosa UFC Fight Night edition of the show. Fun looking fight night card going down this weekend to kind of set the table for some monster pay per views that we have coming up here this fall and winter. So we're going to give out our best bets for the event this weekend, then touch on some of the big news that we've got this week out of the Huge UFC. News. And of course, joining me per usual, my guy. He's very excited about it. The pride of Halifax, Nova Scotia, Ro. Uh, so, Ro, this looks like the final quarter of 2023 for the UFC. It's setting up to be maybe the best stretch we've had in a very long time. Yeah, I'm pretty excited. I mean, it's been a few underwhelming uh, fight night cards, but I think it's going to be all Eesh. worth it when uh, we have these kind of backloaded uh, events towards the end of the year. Some uh, fantastic events I'm really looking forward to. Okay, so let's get into this week's event i'm hoping to fare better than that uh, last week it didn't go very well apologies to anyone who tailed uh, the picks last week we'll try to have a better result this week so we're going to start like we always do with the main event it is a featherweight fight uh yousef versus barbosa yousef all the way up to minus 180 over at DraftKings. barbosa plus 150 at DraftKings, and i'm going to take a shot on the dog give me barbosa plus 150 so I think that this matchup is much closer than these odds indicate. I think it's a coin flip fight. Check out Barbosa. He tends to win this level of fight, especially when there's not really much threat of a takedown. Now, you'll take a look at his record over the past couple of years. It's not pretty. Four and seven in his last 11 fights. But look at who some of those losses came to. Khabib, Justin Gaethje, a split decision loss to Dan Ige. Uh, Bryce Mitchell took him down, controlled him for about 11 minutes. He won that fight. Uh, and I think this just matches up very well for him. He's going to have a four-inch reach advantage in this fight. He's taking on a fighter in Yusef, who's primarily fought unranked fighters. When he did take a big step up in competition, he took on Arnold Allen. Allen won that fight fairly easily. So I think Barbosa, worth a shot here as a dog, especially at plus 150. Ro, what do you like here for the main event? Yeah, I mean, a lot of uh, the same uh, factors that you cited are kind of why I'm looking to Barbosa as well. Definitely think this fight should be closer to a pick and price. I can see why uh, Yusef is the uh, favorite here. Uh, probably mostly his age, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, pretty big age difference there. Definitely, uh, you know, he's got a lot of power in his shots. And Barbosa is the sort of guy that has taken a lot of punishment in his career. But at the same time, yeah, he might be 37 years old. But we saw him, you know, what, just six months ago. Take on Billy Quarantilo, another guy who, you know, very boxing heavy. And he ends up uh, finishing uh, Quarantilo in the first round, uh, you know, as a short underdog there. So he's uh, definitely uh, capable, even at this age, even though he might not be quite as fast as he used to be. And then you look at someone like Yusef, and I actually do have a few question marks about Yusef. Uh, he hasn't fought in a year. Last time he fought, uh, you mentioned the lower level of the competition. He fought a guy making his promotional debut. I uh, ended up submitting him within like a, the first minute. Uh, but he actually herinated two discs in his back soon after Ooh. that. Uh, had a pretty big uh, layoff from training. And, uh, you know, sometimes those back injuries, there's a few injuries that can really affect guys long term, pretty much in every sport. And uh, back's definitely one of them, especially when it comes to someone like Yusef, who is such an athletic specimen there. Uh, so definitely a question mark for me uh, coming into this fight after uh, coming off, you know, a pretty decent layoff uh, with an injury that can be pretty bad long term. Uh, the other question I have about Yusef is just whether he can maintain his usual pace uh, for 25 minutes. Granted, this fight might not even last that long, but it is scheduled for five rounds. And that was a fairly recent change up. Uh, this was elevated to the main event only about a month ago. So these guys have only really known that they're going to be fighting in a five round main event since September. Uh, obviously, Barboza has been scheduled for those sets of fights before. He's only gone past three rounds once, uh, but it's something he trains for. He knows how to conserve his energy. He knows how to be the headline event and be in front of the big lights. Uh, but this is really a step up in terms of uh, performing in front of a, uh, you know, uh, in front of a big uh, performance uh, in big event like this, I should say. You know, uh, headlining a fight night card is certainly a big deal. And it's something that Yusef has never done. So I think uh, that could play a role as well. Uh, so, yeah, all things considered, I do think this should be uh, much closer in terms of the odds, which has me leading towards Barboza as uh, plus 150 there. Okay, there you have it. We are in agreement. So dropping down one fight to the co-main event, we have a fight between Jennifer Maya and Vivian Arujo. Uh, I will be passing on this one, Ro. No bet for me, but you have some thoughts that you wanted to get into for the co-main here. 
yeah, I mean, uh, you know, this might not be the sexiest uh, Cohen main event out there, but I really wanted to dig into it. I wanted to find a handicapping edge. Going to disappoint you guys. I didn't end up coming up with anything in the end, but I do have some suggestions on how to bet this fight. I was originally reeling towards Jennifer Maya here. Uh, you know, I really liked her pressure, her volume. Uh, she's coming off back-to-back -back impressive uh, wins against Casey O'Neill, uh, Marina Morose, landed more than 100 significant strikes in those fights, really loved her output in those fights, really loved how active she is. And obviously, you know, coming off two wins, uh, facing someone on a two-fight uh, losing skid, uh, that's always kind of a cause for uh, looking at uh, the fighter who's uh, coming in with some momentum. But at the same time, I think, uh, you know, the line is a little bit too wide at this point. Uh, looking at what Arujo does best, it's honestly a lot of the same things Maya does. Decent pressure fighter, not really the volume that Maya throws with, but Arujo does have decent takedown ability, uh, some decent offensive wrestling. And we have seen Maya taken down in the past. Uh, when Arujo does that, of course, she can win some of those rounds, uh, even if she maybe uh, might not be having the volume where it looks like she deserves to win those rounds. And if you look at Arujo, I mean, she's, you know, sure, she's on a two-fight skid. She looked awful in her last fight against Amanda Hibas. But before that, she lost to Alexa Grasso. We all know that's an extremely, uh, extremely good opponent. So not the yeah. worst loss to have on your resume. So I think uh, Arujo might be getting a little bit of a... A little bit of a lopsided line against her in this one so i'm not really leaning towards maya anymore but regardless of who you're backing in this one you have to take them i think to win by decision because you're getting much better odds uh for example if you take maya on DraftKings right now to win on the money line minus 155 but if you take her to win by decision you're getting it at about even money uh, minus 110 there uh but yeah 12 of maya's last 13 fights have gone the distance arujo's last eight fights have gone to the judges cards and if wow. you take Arusha to win on the money line, that's plus 130. You take her to win uh, by decision, that's plus 225. So big uh, jump up in value there. So this is a fight that I would say is probably pretty close to a pick -em. I would probably say, you know, Maya has maybe a 55 to 60% chance of winning. Uh, but if you do like Arusha to win, taking her to win by decision at uh, plus 225 is pretty good value there. All right, a little bit of strategy there from Ro. Let's drop down one more fight here. Ro, get back into the bets here. A fun-looking fight, Jonathan Martinez, Adrian Yanez. Great matchmaking here for the UFC. I'm going to take this fight to go under two and a half rounds, minus 130. So what we have here is two very aggressive strikers, neither of whom has very good striking defense, and neither of whom is very eager to be shooting for takedowns. So check out some of the stats. 4.63 significant strikes per minute for Martinez. 6.75 for Giannis, who also absorbs around six significant strikes per minute. So striking differential, not very strong from him. And check out the, uh, the pattern here for him. Six of his seven fights in the UFC have been finished in under two and a half rounds. Each of these men have been knocked out inside of the octagon as well. So I think somebody is getting finished. I will take under two and a half rounds for that one. Ro, bring it home for us, your final bet for the fight night event this weekend. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that fight because I think that fight is going to be fantastically entertaining. Should banger. be a banger. Uh, another fight that I'm excited for, though, is Christian Rodriguez taking on Cameron Simon. Uh, these are two guys that are, you know, very young up-and-comers, but a lot of promise there. Uh, Simon is uh, is undefeated. Rodriguez only has uh, one loss in his career. He's coming off that upset win against uh, Raul Rosas Jr., of course, who's a big yes. underdog in that one. And, uh, you know, he, he weathers Storm in the first round. Then he really took over and showed what he's capable of. And, uh, you know, right now, uh, you're looking at Rodriguez, C-Rod's uh, favorite at about minus 150. So Simon is the underdog here. But I do like uh, Rodriguez in this spot. I actually expected to get him at plus money, to be honest. Uh, there is a lot of hype around uh, Simon, but uh, I don't necessarily think he's quite ready for uh, someone who's as well-rounded and strikes as well as Rodriguez does. Uh, Simon can be a bit of a slow starter. We've seen that in some of his fights. And he doesn't really have the offensive wrestling to take advantage of uh, C-Rod's takedown defense. Uh, defensive wrestling, of course, is one of C-Rod's weaknesses. It's also kind of a weakness of uh, Simon, to be perfectly honest. Both of them are very good off their back in terms of grappling. But I think this is a fight where you're going to see them stand up and strike. And uh, Simon has very good kickboxing. He has a lot of power in his shots. But he's also pretty hittable. 
Uh, we've seen him get cracked before, and he seems to really trust in his chin, but he's also never faced someone who's as dangerous as uh, Rodriguez is. Rodriguez is a bit tighter in terms of his striking. He's a little bit cleaner. He's a little bit more well-rounded as well, and I think he's faced a higher level of a competition. Obviously, he has that one loss on his resume, but that was uh, coming on short notice against Jonathan Pierce, who I uh, rate pretty highly. Uh, Pierce is a very high-end wrestler and grappler who I think is going to make a lot of noise in this division as well. So, you know, that's uh, certainly a loss when you're making your promotional debut that uh, doesn't look too shabby on the resume there. So I do like uh, Rodriguez. I think he's a little bit more well-rounded. And at this stage of their careers, I think he's the better fighter. So give me Rodriguez on the money line at minus 150. All right, there you have it, our best bets for this weekend's Fight Night event. But let's get into some of the news here, Ro. Uh, just a little bit of it here this week. So a major shakeup for UFC 294. So often when you have like a, a big time fight and somebody pulls out, sometimes they just throw somebody in there and it's like, eh, I, I guess I'll watch it. But uh, in terms of replacement fights, this mm -hmm. is probably the best duo they, <laughs> they've ever put together. So we knew somewhere's down the line that uh, Islam and uh, Alexander Volkanovsky, they were probably going to have a rematch. The first fight was very close. Islam probably won it, but I could see how people could make a case for Volkanovsky in that fight. But here we are, 10 days notice, Volkanovsky going to step in again to challenge for the 155-pound title. Uh, this time around, uh, right now at the time of this recording, he's a plus 185 underdog. Islam coming back at minus 225. That's a pretty steep decline from the first fight. Islam closed around minus 355 for that fight. Volk plus 280. So you're not going to get the uh, same value on him this time around. So the first fight was great. The rematch could be great. But it's not obviously not happening under the best circumstances. I was thinking that this was a fight that they were going to save potentially to headline UFC 300, maybe. And maybe a little bit of the energy gets taken out of it because it's just 10 days notice for Volkanovsky. I think he's coming off of an elbow surgery. He's got a new baby at home. He's got a lot going on in his life and he's got a big uh, flight over there as well. So a lot working against him. I saw him post a video on YouTube and he talked about the, the underdog story. And that's certainly an aspect that people can get into. So we're going to have our official bets for this fight next week. I think it could go longer. We'll see what the over-under is when that comes out. But uh, your thoughts on Volk stepping in and the matchup as a whole, bro? Yeah, I mean, obviously, I love uh, seeing him step in. I think the official uh, backup for this fight was Gamrot. Um, but uh, obviously, you know, 10 days out, you have time to find another replacement. I think we all agree that we'd rather see Volk uh, uh, face yes. him in a rematch than Gamrot. Uh, but, uh, you know, looking at this fight on a whole, it is a very, very tough, uh, uh, very tough fight for Volk to win. Uh, and you're seeing him right now, uh, you said uh, plus 185. So yesterday, yeah. uh, when the fight was first announced, he was plus 225. So you're all, we're already seeing uh, money come in on Volk uh, at plus 225 there. That line is shortened a little bit, uh, which definitely makes uh, makes sense considering how close that first fight was. But yeah, definitely a lot of concern. Uh, the injury, obviously, to some extent. But one interesting thing, when he, he came off that surgery in the middle of July, I think it was, said he couldn't train until the start of September. Uh, but even then, he said, you know what, I'm going to be ready to go in October to face Oliveira or Makachev or whatever. So, you know, he was already in his mind expecting to be willing to, you know, train, you know, on just a month and a half or so and take this fight on. And, uh, you know, he usually cuts to 145. So, I mean, being able to having to cut to 155 is a little bit more manageable for him than maybe some other guys out there. Okay, so Coleman event, a big switch up there too. It seems like uh, the Costa and Shamaya fight, we've been waiting for that fight for months now. Yeah. And then uh, Costa had an issue with the elbow. He's not going to be able to recover. So he needed to pull out or maybe the UFC kicked him out. We got a big time replacement, Camaro Usman, one of, I'm not going to say the best welterweight of all time. That distinction belongs to GSP, ESP. but Usman is certainly one of them. And he's moving up to 185 to fight a guy who was fighting at 170 as well, uh, Hazmat Shemaev. He's had trouble making weight. So Usman plus 220 underdog, Shemaev minus 270. So to put those odds into perspective a little bit, the last time Shemaev had a big time fight, he hasn't had a lot of them in the fight in the UFC. But you'll recall he fought uh, Gilbert Burns, a very close fight. He closed at around minus six hundred in that fight. So I guess a little bit of respect here for Usman, but 
Usman maybe not getting a lot of respect from the public out there. A lot of people writing him off. You know, he's not very far removed from being the number one pound for pound fighter in the world. And he'd probably be in a much different spot today if it wasn't for, him, for that head kick from Leon Edwards uh, two fights ago. So in the UFC, in the sport of MMA, uh, the decline for a fighter is typically a steep one. It just happens like that. Not like in basketball or baseball where year over year the stats were, will slowly decline. You often see these guys just fall off of a cliff and people are saying that Usman looks slow in the last fight. He's got no knees, people are saying. Uh, what are your thoughts on the fight and what do, you, uh, do you give Usman a chance in this one? You know, this is another one where, interestingly enough, uh, I guess the public has already jumped on the opening number. Uh, that number was 260 yesterday for Usman. Uh, now, I think it was like 260 at midnight, already down to 220. Uh, so obviously the public does they give him a little bit of a chance here. And how could you not? I mean, this is a guy that even, you know, just a year ago, I think people were still saying this guy might, you know, become the greatest uh, of all time in his weight class. Uh, but yeah, it's, it, it is a really tough ask of him. Uh, we know that those knees are pretty much shot at this point in his career. Uh, so we don't know if his wrestling is going to be on the same level that it once was. So we could, you know, see both these guys kind of keep this fight standing up, which could be interesting. Uh, if we're talking about Usman last year uh, taking on uh, Chimaya before Chimaya fought Burns, I think we would all agree that uh, Usman would win. But it's uh, going to be a pretty tough ask of him here. But I do like the value on him as a pretty big underdog uh, because he is just, uh, you know, this is a guy that's been there. He's done it all. And uh, Chimaya is still largely untested. We saw him go against Burns and we saw him, you know, really get pushed to his limits there. So. If he got pushed to his limits by uh, Burns, I'm not willing to uh, fade uh, Usman at uh, plus 200 or better. Yeah, it's now or never for Shemaev. Uh, you know, we've been hearing about how fantastically great this guy is yeah. for half of a decade now, and his career has been stalled. He hasn't fought in over a year now, yeah. so this is a big-time fight for him. So if he's going to be this great fighter, now is the time. So we'll see how he fares versus Usman. We'll have our official picks for those fights on next week's edition of pound for pound picks but Ro, uh one last topic here to touch on so the ufc and usada will be discontinuing their ped testing program at the end of the year and there seems to be a lot of uh, misinformation around there about this so a, a lot of people are kind of under the wrong impression here thinking that just anything is going to go now with the ufc and uh uh, steroids are going to be legal. That's far from the case. The UFC, they're going to figure out some type of uh, alternative drug testing program. And most fighters and people in the know, uh, a, a lot of uh, high-ranking MMA media types, uh, seem to really be in favor of this. Uh, USADA had gained a bit of a reputation for borderline harassment of some of these fighters, you know, showing up at their homes all hours of the night, showing up on their vacations to get test samples. So it's probably a good thing if the fighters are in favor of it, then I am too. Ro, any thoughts on uh, the UFC-USADA relationship coming to an end? Yeah, I mean, obviously there's some concerns about, uh, you know, if this is going to be an internal process moving forward and how, uh, you know, forthright that will be. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I think I think you hit the nail on the head. Uh, USADA definitely lost a lot of support over the years with, uh, you know, some of what they've done. And yes, I understand it. If a guy looks incredibly jacked, maybe you test him a few more times. But some of the things I'm hearing are just insane, like, Guys before they come into the UFC have been tested like 30 plus times. Like the guys who are like the most jacked and chiseled, like always tends to be them just constantly getting tested and tested and tested. And at a certain point, you've got to say like, it's got to be like a fair level playing field for everyone. And it can interfere with the other things, uh, you know, in their lives. So I think there's got to be a balance between the two. And hopefully the UFC uh, manages to reach it with uh, whoever their uh, future uh, testing body is. Yeah, John Jones and those pictograms, eh? Maybe yeah. the uh, UFC will align with uh, the WWE. Their uh, drug testing seems to be uh, pretty tough on those guys. Just joking about that. I don't think they will be doing that anytime too soon. Okay, that does it for this week's edition of Pam for Pam Picks. We'll be back with you next week. Big pay-per-view next week. We'll have our best bets for that. Thank you very much for watching. Best of luck with your bets. We will see you next time. Woo!